But first, if you have a kosher schach, you have to have enough schach that would be rove at seil ala chama, right? If you have that, and then you put a tarpaulin on top of it, it's fine according to the way of time. Even with the tarpaulin on it? Yeah. I can't remarkable, imagine. right? I can't imagine that that's true. I know, remarkable, right? So according to him, therefore, if you have rain, and the Rishonim do not. He based it on, he ba- the Rishonim do based it on the Gemara, the Masechta, that says that if you have a sukkah in a valley between, a canyon, a canyon, like the straight walls, you know, above, which never ever sees the sun, you have schach on it, the Gemara says, it's fine. Disregard the fact that you never see the sun. And that the walls of the canyon... You have to see it stops. No, let's say the sun never comes there. In that direction. Never. But the important is to see the sky. Never. He gave an example of streets in Manhattan which never have the sun here. Yeah. Well, I would think so. I mean, um, the, uh, the, the, the... You have a whole block. Yeah. Whole blocks like this. You know, whole block like this, and it uh, runs between north and south. It runs north south, and the sun goes up in the east, oh. right, and goes up and over. And it's kind of the angle is such that the sun never actually goes down into that street. It's a little bit further down away. It's always shaded. And there's another street over here, like this. There's a cross street with a big skyscraper over there. South and north, whatever. So this you're sitting in and you and you live there. And you make a sukkah, it's fine. Right? And that's the Gemara's example of a canyon. There are certain canyons you would never see the sun hit the ground. Right? It's a good schach. Why? Because potentially it is a schach. If, if you can't even According to the most we shown here, if the mountain the buildings weren't there, it would it would be good. If the buildings were not there, yeah. the sun would hit it, and this would be good schach. Right. So according to the Rishonim, yeah. that is only if the walls of the canyon went straight up, not over the sukkah. Right. So that if the sun ever came, this sukkah would be a good sukkah, right? Right. And even if the sukkah would never, the sun would never come. According to the Rabbi Nutan, he says, what difference does it make? If it never sees the sun, what difference does it make if it could see the sun or not could the sun? I mean, he says, if it's a kosher schach yeah. and you have the mountain going like this, yeah. what difference does it make if it's going like this or like this? Yeah. The sun is not going to get there. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> let's, not, let's not... Of course, we, we have opinions that we've shown that reject the Rabbeinu Tam. Yeah. And the Shulchan Aruch does not paskin like the Rabbeinu Tam. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. However, he said, in a pinch... If you're going to be in the rain, in the yeah. sukkah, yeah. you don't have the sukkah, mitzvah sukkah, right? You don't. A mitzvah of a sukkah with rain is defined by a certain amount of rain, you have no sukkah. So you go into the house. And you say, okay, I don't have the sukkah now. According to the rain of Tom, however, you do. According to the rain of Tom, all you have to do is put up a plastic sheet. Yeah. And you have a good schach. Because prior, you know, it, uh, essentially the schach is a kosher schach. This is a kosher sukkah, according to him. He would sit in such a sukkah. So the Abu Abraham actually says that in time, we don't pass on the rain time in general, fine. However, when it rains, you have a little bit of an etza to the yotze sukkah, according to the rain time, by remaining in the sukkah with a tarp. Is it better to sit in the sukkah, according to the rain time, with a tarp, than to be in the dining room? Uh, yes. Maybe. No way, I don't know. That. He would, the no, Udram says yes, because, you know, in case the opinion of the Rabbeinu Tam says that this is a sukkah. According to the, those who say it's not a good sukkah, so you're sitting in a puzzle sukkah, just like sitting in your dining room. It's right. no different, right? right? So at least you gain maybe something by sitting in the sukkah with a tarp. I don't think so. I, you know, I said that the Mechilas Kavadah. What do you mean you don't think so? What, do you, what does that mean, you don't think so? You mean... You cannot possibly agree with the Rabbeinu Tam, and he is wrong. I wouldn't say that. Well, according to the Abu Raham, though we do not pass from the Rabbeinu Tam, he is an opinion which makes a sukkah kasher, according to the understanding of that Gemara with the canyons. But that's the only. Where it's fine. That's the only that's like this. 
Not, could, not according to the Rabbeinu Tam. Not according to the Rabbeinu Tam. Why didn't the Why didn't he, the Gemara give a different example? I don't know. I mean, the Rabbeinu Tam understands it as saying that if the schach is sale, but not because of the schach, but because of something else, right? If the sukkah has shade, not because of itself, but because of something else, are you okay? The Gemara says it's okay. According to him, it doesn't matter whether it's above or below or the size. What about a sukkah that is high? What about a sukkah that's narrow? Very narrow sukkah. Well, that's one foot, right? No. I didn't say 20 amos. No. In between. A sukkah that is, let's say, you know, four feet wide. And it goes up 18 feet high. Not 20 amos, right? Mm-hmm. And you living in New York, you will never have sun inside that sukkah in October. Because the sun is going to be always at an angle. You build it in such a way that you're never going to have sun, sun inside. The schach is good schach. Yeah. But the sun never comes to the schach to make shade for you. It's the wall's angle that you sit in the shade of. Is that okay? I would say yes. Yeah, because were the sun on top, your svar is yeah. were the sun on top, it would be okay. But he says, what do you mean were? He doesn't agree that were the sun on, on top is the issue. The issue is that the schach is kosher because it could produce tzel more than sun. It may never do so. Okay, but And even if it may never do so, it is kosher, the Gemara is saying. So to my mind, once I have kosher schach, what does it make if there's something on top of it rather than within it or on the side of it? it? What if it's on top of the metal? Oh, well then... He already also said that, that it cannot be, for example, inside a house where there is a moving roof, be, with the roof on, because that's called not a diras arai, but a diras keva. There may, be, there may be issues about the kind of material that you use, if you have a, you know, a plada thing in front, on top of you, that you would consider that a house rather than a sukkah. I mean, lead, metal, whatever, right? So, those are issues that may be in existence, Correct. But well, we're talking about something flimsy like a tarp, a schlock, a plastic sheet. Well, you heard yesterday. Were you there yesterday? Um, I don't know. You heard yesterday he was talking about a tent inside a sukkah. What a tent? In which, in which the angle of the tent is such that the top of it is no more than a tepach. It just comes to a peak. You could sleep in a sukkah like that. In a, in a tent like that, inside a sukkah. Doesn't that sound bizarre? And me, you know what I'm saying? Um, so you're in a diras arai. Nobody ever, where did you ever get the idea, or why should we get the idea? Let's say you're sitting in a plastic raincoat, right? Yeah. So your body's protected from the rain, not because of the schach, but because of the raincoat. I mean, to what point do we have to be exposed? What does exposure mean? So let's say you're in a tent. Let's say you're a hat, that's a, a peaked hat, that's made out of plastic, and a plastic sh- you know, sheet around you. Is that okay? Are you in a sukkah? You would, you would think so, right? It's a DRSRI. It's a perfect sukkah. It's a perfect sukkah, yeah. You are not exposed. Let's say you were, instead of a, a peaked hat, let's say you're under an umbrella. Is that okay? And the sun doesn't get to you because of the umbrella. I mean, th- these are issues, right? And what is, what is exposure? What requires, what requirement do we have that we sit under this, the, this under the schach? In what way to be exposed? So the, the Rabbeinu time is obviously pushing the envelope to the other degree. It is a schach, which is a dearest arai, you wouldn't live there all year round. That's what's required. Sukkah is schach is schach. Can't nail it down. And therefore, once you have that, you can uh, yes, put a sheet on. Okay. All right. Bye bye. So, we are in the Parsha of Kitabo. And there's one cute uh, mitzvah that I that saw. It, you know that uh, one of these things is requires is that the Torah requires that when they come into Eretz Israel, they should 
put part of the country, part of the Levim, is it, on Har Guizim, and part of the Levim on Har Eval, and the people in between, and the people should call, they should hear the Levim say, cursed is the man who doesn't keep the Torah, cursed is the man who is over there for the Zara, cursed is the man, everybody says Amen, mm -hmm. right? Okay, the bracha is on one side, and the Kalal is on the other side, I don't know exactly how it works, because the only thing that the Torah says is Arur, is the the curses, but uh, so it's supposed to be one mountain on one side and one mountain on the other side. We say one of them is the bracha and the other one is the klala. Oh, no, it sounds like the people are going to be on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And the Leviim are, are down below. It's very strange. No, I mean, I, how do you picture it? Is it true? Are the people on the mountain? Because he says, these are the people, we are, by the way, we are on chapter uh, 27. 27, Pasuk Yud Aleph 11. Yes, sir. Moshe commanded the people to say, these are the people who are going to stand to bless the people on the mountain of Har Gwizim, when you go over the Jordan, when you cross the Jordan. And even the mains, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Issachar, Yosef, and Yemen. You see, Levi is one of them. So, part of the Levim was in the mountain also. Yeah, that's, that's strange to me, correct? I don't know how to picture this. Because and then he says, and these are the people who go on the curse, with the curses, stand on the curses on Har Eval. Ruvein, God, Asher, Zvulun, Dan, and Naftali. Then it says, V'anu el v'im v'amru el kol ish Yisrael kol ram. And then the Levian, are those the people who are sitting on the bracha? Well, they, they're not going to say bracha. They're going to say klala in a moment. You'll see. So, the, so they, the, maybe there were special Levian that were down below that were appointed. In the valley? In the Levi, it doesn't say. Yeah. The Levian will say to the entire people mm -hmm. in a loud voice. Where, yeah, are so they? Where are they? Is, is, is Where are they at this point? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, know. I don't know what the picture is. The Levim are, are listed on the, as the tribe for the bracha on our regime. Yeah. 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 So now the Levim are going to say this kol ram. But they're standing, if, the, if those are the people who are standing on the bracha mountain, uh -huh. Then it's a little strange because this is what they shall say. Are you ready? Arur, Hayish Asher Yaseh Pesel Masechato Avat Hashem. You cursed is the man who does this, yeah. who makes an idol, and so on. And and right, and he puts it in hiding. And all the people will say, Amen. We agree that we accept on this on us on ourselves this curse if we do this. Arur Makle Avivimo Amar Eden Makle may be Mekalel, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Cursed is the man who curses his father and mother. Mm -hmm. They say Amen. Curses is the one who steals or takes advantage of, you know, encroaches on somebody else's rights, on somebody else's well, business yeah. or whatever, right? Property. Amen. Arur mashge iver baderech. Cursed is the man who misleads a person who's blind on the way and which applies to everyone else that you might mislead. You fool mm -hmm. somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm I mean. Arur Makteba Mishpat Geri Atom Amena Vamakola Amen. Right? So the Levim aren't distributed on some of this map, some of that map? No. Your, 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 your guess is as good as mine. But... Uh, he doesn't say. No. Rashi probably says. Supposed to be there in the in. Rashi probably says. Okay? But anyway, anyway, well, I wasn't going to get into the okay. format. But what is interesting is that the last Arur, the last Kulala on per, Pasuk 26, Chavav, Arur, okay. Asher, yeah, Arur, are you ready? Arur is page uh, Taf Ayin Beit. Arur Asher Lo Yakim Et Divrei Torah Azot. This is an, an enigmatic phrase. All the other ones we understand. Mm -hmm. Taking bribery, hitting somebody in hiding, sleeping with somebody's wife, mm -hmm. right? Very, very many things that are understandable. This one says, Arur Ashaloya Kima Divriya Torah Azot, La Sototam. Cursed is the man who will not uphold 
What is Yakim? Uphold this Torah to do them. So the Ramban is going to discuss what is Yakim at Divrei Torah Azot mean? What does that mean, to uphold the Torah? Does that mean to do all the mitzvot? So am, I cursed, am I cursed as, as of today? Yeah, I think the whole Torah. So I am cursed as of today because I didn't do all of the Torah. Is that, is that what... Uh, ooh, what does that mean? It cannot be that, right? So what does it mean, uphold? Everyone, everyone is cursed. Does it mean I refuse to, even if when I could? What does it mean? So look at the Ram. Oh, you don't have the Ramban. No. So I shall translate it. Yes. They point us to the one that starts on Tafai and Beit, Chavav, but he says, Divrea Maskil, uh, the Yerushalmi. If you see about halfway, Uba Yerushalmi, not halfway, about two -third, one third up from mm -hmm. the, the bottom. You say, Uba Yerushalmi, Vesota? Raiti. Mm -hmm. I have seen, written in the Yerushalmi Talmud, et lo, asher lo yakim, what does that mean, not uphold? V'chi yesh Torah no felet, they ask in the Yerushalmi, is the, is the Torah falling down, that somebody has to hold it up? Mm -hmm. It's a, obviously mm -hmm. just an expression, the Gemara is trying to suggest that we don't really understand what is yakim. It doesn't mean build it up, it doesn't mean hold it up, it means something, right? Uh, no felet. So. What, what, what? Why is it the first Because you didn't think it was... Um, um. Uh, because I was directed to by this pamphlet. Oh, it, may, okay. it may have been something less okay. critical. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, we could, if you read it, if you want to. But anyway... Yeah, okay, good. Is, is the Torah falling that somebody has to uphold it? So he says, no. Rabbi Shimon ben Yakim. Omer, which is an interesting, <laughs> yeah, interesting <laughs> play on words. His yeah. name was really Ben Yakim, yeah. and he's the one who was interested in this pasuk, obviously, uh -huh. because it was his namesake. Wow, I never heard of him. <laughs> like a name with Shimon Ben Yakim. <laughs> Omer, Zeh Chazan. We're talking about the man who reads the Torah, not the Chazan who davens before the Amitra, but the man who reads the, the Torah, mm -hmm. and therefore. He has to somehow hold up the Torah. We'll see in a moment. He has to somehow hold the Torah. And do you think that the Torah would command, Moshe would command all the people that they stand on Har Grizim and Har Ival to say that cursed is the Chazan who doesn't pick up the Torah? I mean, a little odd, no? Of all the things that are mentioned here, there are some very critical things, right? murder, you know, and adultery, and, and fooling other people, and taking bribery to, to kill an innocent man. So to curse somebody, some chazan, before all the people who doesn't hold up the Torah. No. For people to see. Well, the dimension was pretty severe, uh, severe was pretty serious, but the, uh, if, you, uh, if, if it means um, the whole Torah, then that's, that's, not, that's not what it means. It means the Torah, the Sefer Torah, according to this man, Rav Yakim, the son of Rav Shimon ben Yakim, says, this is about the Chazan, 68, the Yuvar Halan, the Chazan Shu Omeid, U Magbiya Sefer Torah, the footnote, 68. We'll see, mm -hmm. right? So that would be very peculiar, right? Yeah. That it requires that the chazan lifts up the Torah while he's standing and everybody should be able to see the Torah. And, and if he doesn't do that, he's cursed. Yep. Rabbi Shimon ben Chalafta, a different person says, Omer, Zed Beitin Shel Matan, meaning Mata, right? This is the Beitin on earth. Uh, meaning the king or the president of Nasi and the Shoftim Shem Yisrael should demand, should require that the Torah be upheld. Meaning to enforce it, to encourage people to learn it, to teach people to observe it, right? The leaders, the leaders. They should, Lahakim, to uphold the Torah means to support the existence and the observation, observance and the learning of the Torah. Right? So he's going to go on. Demar of Yehuda Baravuna, Beshem Shmuel. They said, these people said the following thing. Al Davar Hazek Kara Yoshiyahu. 
ואמר, יושיהו הוא זקן, עם מלאכים בית, הוא טור את כלובי. With great anguish and great sadness, you remember what happened? He says here, Shevilo Hilkia was Sefer Torah, Matzakatu Varura Shaloyakim, Vamar Lailakim, Lachem Kitiba Harav Shikibet Sukon Yudav Israel, the court by Embrit, Chadashal left Achrea Shem. What happened was, Yoshia was a king, and he, and there was a lot of idol worship uh, around, right? And he, uh, he went along with it, maybe, or whatever. One day, Hilkiahu, the Kohen, Gadol, came to him and he said, I want to tell you uh, something amazing. We just found a Torah scroll in among all kinds of things in the Beit HaMikdash. And so Yoshiyahu says, really? We found a Sefer Torah? Let's go find out what it says. This is incredible. Amazing, right? Mm-hmm. It would mean that at a certain period of our history, you know, uh, nobody saw the Sefer Torah. One, Nobody read the Sefer Torah. The, the people didn't even know what was in it. One, thef, one Sefer. I don't know. They said they, they found Dvarim. Yeah. They found the Sefer of Dvarim in a scroll. So he said, let's go read it. So the Kohanim read it before him. King. Came to this Pasuk that we just now read. Arur, cursed is the man. Asher lo yakim et divrei Torah hazot who would not uphold this Torah, la'asototam, to do them, to do the things that are written in the Torah. And the people said, Amen. So he started carrying his clothing, the king. He said, who else is supposed to uphold the Torah other than the king? I don't mean perform it, to do the result. It means, you know, make sure that the Torah is kept. It's kept for everyone. It's uphold, upheld. So he tore his clothing about this, and he declared to Hilkiah and to the people, we are starting new. He was, he was a Baal Tshuva. He, he was one of the most incredible Baal Tshuva, Yoshiao. The question is, why would he have a downfall? That's another matter. But he was an incredible uh, uh, Baal Tshuva, and he riled, riled up the people to get rid of their Avodah Zarah, to read the Torah, to start a new covenant with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and so on and so on. Because he took to heart this pasuk, that those people who are able and who have the power and who have the influence and who have the charisma to be able to uphold the Torah for the public, uh, they must do it. They must do so. They can't just say, well, you know, the public is not too intelligent. The public is not interested. I'm doing my mitzvahs. I go to the base medrash. I learn uh, with my friends. Uh, Pinky and uh, Yahu, do I have to go out of my way to go crazy and go out there and make sure that everybody else keeps the Torah? I don't have to do that, right? So you might say, well, you're talented, you're a rabbi, you're, 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 you know how to do video, you, uh, you know how to, how, to write, how to write good articles about the Torah, so you must do so. What you must, what you're capable of doing, you can do. You say, well, no, I like to do video, but I can do uh, cartoons, Mickey Mouse. I mean, of course, should I do some videos for Torah learning, right? And I can write, but I can write uh, children's stories. I can write, uh, you know, uh, Harry Potter, if I'm a good writer. Well, I have to step, you know, who's going to pay me? What's, going to, what's the big deal that I should write uh, articles on Torah? So, this is an imperative that those people who are capable of doing something to uphold the Torah must do so. Right? It's an amazing pasuk. So, to the point of saying Arur, one who does not, who is capable and who does not. So that means that it's a more responsibility, for example, to Pinky. For someone like Pinky. And for me and for you right. because I more, than, the more, than for me, more than more than for me because I cannot do articles and I cannot do uh, videos so I get off my scot free I'm, I'm okay okay <laughs> people of influence have to do to do it right well so, but the, the, so the, there is no supposed uh, that every king has to keep a uh, sefer torah that's true too that's true too so he didn't I mean, so there were no Sefer Torah there was no at this time. There was no Torah. Nobody read the Torah, nobody the Torah. know the Torah. Uh, they, they found the Torah, right?
I mean, it's bizarre. We cannot imagine such a thing, right? We cannot imagine such a thing today. I mean, even even at a time when people were just pretty far away, Sefer Torah were around. Imagine, the, the king is told, hey, we found the Sefer Dvarim in the Beit HaMikdash. Yeah, but it's a Let's big go difference. Find out. It's a big difference because the, the Sefer Torah is, is only for the kings or the people that have money to pay for their, uh, you know, for us, it's really, easy. I mean, all of the communities of, of Israel, they didn't read the Torah once a uh, Shabbat or... Uh, they used to. They kept lost. There was a uh, All of them got lost. All of them got lost or all of them were forgotten or all of them didn't care about where they were. So after a while, nobody was writing the Sefer Torah anymore because they were doing idol worship. The, the people were out there. Had nothing to do with it. Incredible. It's true. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So... So, I mean, the story is fantastic, but what they're trying to tell you is that when he tore his clothing, he said, it is incumbent upon me to uphold the Torah, right? And I should have done it. And therefore, I'm tearing my clothing, I have to do something about it. Amar Rabbi Asi, B'Shem Rabbi Tanchum, another, Barhia, Lamad, Vilimaid, Vishamar, Vasa. if a person learned Torah, we're sitting here learning Torah, and he made, and he taught Torah, like you teach your friends, right? And Shamar, and he observed the Torah, like mm -hmm. Pinky, who observes all the Torah. Ve'asa, and he does the mitzvot. Vahaya sipek piyado lehachzik, velo yichzik. He did everything wonderfully, he's a tzaddik, he's a tzaddik. And he was capable, he had the possibility, he had the capability, the talent, the possibility of upholding and strengthening the Torah among the public, and he didn't do it, I raise it call I roar. This person is cursed, according to this pasuk, right? Because mm -hmm. this is the last one. You did everything, you did everything, you did everything. But the person who doesn't uphold the Torah for the public, right, besides himself, let's say his family, his community, his, his, the public at large, even if he does learning, and even if he teaches, and even if he does, performs the mitzvot, and he's a tzaddik, he is in the category of a cursed person because he didn't take advantage of his ability to uphold the Torah. But what happened with Hilkiyahu? No, he's Kiyahu, but Hilkiyahu. going at all. Because it's a big responsibility. Yeah, yeah. He, well, he found the Torah. He found it, but... He, so he says, let me go with the king. His reaction is king. different, like the king. The yeah. king... Ah, you know, Hilkiyahu was commanded to go out and start the... Uh, all the, for the, all the people. Yeah, he used the king used his people to grant the power and the ability. Mm -hmm. With only with only the king who had the real power. Mm -hmm. If Hilkiahu would have gone out among the people to tell them not to do about Azara like the king would be uh, doing, mm -hmm. then he probably would have been killed. I mean. yes. Okay. Yes. Yidrashu v'hakama hazot beit hamelech v'anisiut. So the Gemara, I guess into your shamis, probably say they therefore derived. This requirement, this responsibility to uphold the Torah on the king's house and on the leadership. That it is in their hands to uphold the Torah against the people who, who put down the Torah, who, who, who influence people the opposite, right? And even if this king or this leader person is a perfect tzaddik in his deeds, and he had the ability to uphold the Torah against the hands of the evil people who are doing uh, bad things, or or who violate the Torah, this person is cursed. You can't say I'm a tzaddik, they're terrible people, what do you want from me? Right? Well, he's Bakhtiya I mean, uh, who's the other person? Abraham Avinu. Uh, yeah, but Abraham Avinu was the one who made other people sin, and Abraham Avinu was the, pe was the one who brought people closer to God. Right? So, but Abraham had the ability and didn't do it, but he would have. That's what he says. That's what. That's what. That's that's the way the Yerushalmi understands this pasuk. And this is like we have described the meaning of this pasuk. The Ramban says. Now he's going back to 
Shimon ben Yakim. Mm -hmm. He says, it's Agada. Uh, what should I say? A kind of a, uh, a homiletic, a homiletic way to attach a certain mitzvah to the Pasuk, not because the Pasuk really means it, that we're talking about the Chazan, really, also, also. She'ino makim sefer Torah lahamidan ketikunam shelo yipolu. Yipolu. One possibility is, to talk about the Chazan is, you know, he takes care of the sefer Torah, it's red, and then he puts it away in the Aron. If you put it in the way in the Aron, in such a way that it's leaning over, and somebody's going to open the door and it falls, then you didn't uphold the Torah. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously it's a physical thing. Or you put it on the table, and the table is kind of like uh, you're slanted, and you don't hold on to it, and it rolls on the floor. I mean, then you were responsible for not being upholding the Torah. What, 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 what is the claim? What does he want to add to the Yeah, well, I mean, it's just the homiletics, obviously. It's a loyakim. He's taking the glitter. So he who talks about loyakim at Sefer Torah, to not uphold, hold it up. The Gemara says, and is a Torah falling? So you would say, yeah, sometimes the Torah is falling, so you have to keep it from falling. I mean, that's a, the one thing. Bellini read, and I think it doesn't talk, if you want to talk about homiletics, it doesn't really mean to make the Torah fall down, to keep it from falling down. Uh, really, if you want to talk about the Chazan, I'll tell you like this. She'eno mekim sefer Torah al hatzibur leharot pnei ktivato lakol. They're saying what's required and what we want is that the Chazan should pick up the Torah and hold it up so that the writing should be seen by all. Right? Its writing should be seen by everybody. There's a Masechet Sofrim that says the following. The custom is to lift up the Torah and to show it that the face of the writing should be seen to the entire people that are standing there, to the left and to the right, and to the front and to the back. Because it is a mitzvah for all people, men and women, to see that which is written, the diktav, the, the writing of the Torah, and to bow down before it, and to say, V'zot Torah she'sam Moshe l'fnei b'nei Yisrael, Right? Right. And this is our custom. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to know a homiletic way about why that is minha came to be, it is to satisfy this Asher Yakim, Lo Yakim, and Sefer HaTorah Hazor. That's later. La Sototam. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a more, what should I say, not literal suggestion that we attach to this pasuk, right? Mm -hmm. But the real meaning of the pasuk is this leadership, the capability of influencing people. Right. And mm -hmm. not doing it is highly big responsibility. It's a... It seems, it, the Torah is really a communal Torah. It's a, a Torah of community. It's not a personal Torah only. It's certainly personal. It's certainly personal. Your own relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu is essential, right? Your own responsibility to act in such a way that you relate, relate to the Kaddish Baruch Hu. But part of that is, you know, the Torah was given to the nation. And the Brit, the covenant of Hashem, was with the people. It wasn't with me. Right? It wasn't with any one individual. When Hashem made the covenant with Abraham Avinu, it says, Lecha Zaracha acharecha. You know, he made a breach with him to you and your children, every, even though there was only one person then at, one time, at that time. And he was already talking about the nation that he will build, right? He, Hashem is not interested in the, only in an individual, right? It well, is the individual who create, who will create a people, will create a world, who will, who will influence others. Why, why so you can't sit and say, I'm righteous and I'm fine and I'm great, you know. Why is not he, enough. Why did he leave? leave who, who was the king that, that uh, about whom it said that, that they, they changed from, from one border to the other border and there was no, 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 uh, no, what, what, what did Chizkiyahu do? The Chizkiyahu. Chizkiyahu is a coin gadol. Oh, this is Yoshiyahu. This is the king Yoshiyahu. Yoshiyahu was, I think, after him. After Chizkiyahu. Both were big bugs. Now, you remember, did we read uh, the chapter, uh, the fifth, tenth chapter in, uh, in Sanhedrin together, you and I? 
So Chizkiah was meant, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And Kol Yisrael Yeshlein Chelek Lo'olam Abba. So one of the people, one of the things they talked about is Chizkiah, how come he got into trouble? And the Chizkiah's trouble was that he did not say Shira, remember? Uh, he, listen, they, they have a different opinion about what each one of them was responsible. He did great things, there's no question, right? But he didn't have any children, he didn't want to have any children, he didn't want to get married, remember? He was the one who didn't want to get married because Menashe was going to come from him. And uh, the Yirmiyahu, the, the Yishayahu, Yishayahu Hanabi came to him and says, you're going to die. And he says, uh, he, uh, don't he marry his daughter. You're going to die. What? He married his, his daughter. At the end, he made a deal with him. Listen, if you, uh, you're right. You can... So... So he married. So he says, "You want me to marry? You really want me to marry? Even no matter what my children are, you have to. I have to marry. How about marrying me, your daughter? Which means you have to take the risk that Manasha is going to come from your daughter, not just from me, but from your daughter too, right? Okay. No, no, it's a long story. But anyway, so each one of them has his problems. Historically, they didn't make it. So the Gemara ponders, you know, what was their downfall? Now, Yoshiyahu was." was at this point very righteous. I mean, he saw the Torah found, and he heard these words, Arur HaShaloyakim, is that Torah of La Sotam, and Torah La Sotam, and he said, I have to do it, because I am the king, so obviously the Torah is talking to me. I'm, I'm the one who has the power, the capability, the ability to do it, so I must do it. Otherwise, I am cursed. So he tore his clothing because he felt like he was cursed, because he, he had failed the people all this time. So he changed his ways. I mean, mm -hmm. Very interesting. I mean, but, you know, the important thing is not so much to understand Yoshiyahu, I, I, I beg to say, I mean, I don't know, but to understand ourselves. I mean, what, what is being said here is that you really have to examine yourself about what your capabilities are with regard not just to yourself, but to regard to others. Your children, your neighbors, your community, your kahila, the, the county the state, the world, I mean, everybody has different capabilities. And to the point, to the extent that you have those capabilities that you have to discover, you have to find, then you're required to use it. Afilu tzadik kamur, that's what he's saying here, right? Afilu tzadik kamur. Ve'haya yachol l'achzik atorah v'yadar shayim v'var mabagdim otah harei ze'arur. I think you are, you, you are yourself, by the way, are not in bad shape. I'm in pretty bad shape. You, you make your case in jail all the time. So this is very uh, very serious, right? Well, I, I, I wanted to extricate myself from the implications of the pasuk. No, I, I, obviously we have to take it seriously. It's true. So, in this way you have to learn Spanish. <laughs> No. But it's amazing. And you too. <laughs> so it's amazing. This is very. Uh... By the way, you should take tonight one of those tapes and start working on one tape. Translate one tape. Translate one tape as an example of what you can do with the, you know, so it would be catching to a whole continent, and we'll show it to Rabbi Wine. Pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. Right. Pretty good. You know, the tapes that Rabbi Wine has, this yeah. whole library, yeah. they're written in English, right? Yeah. I mean, or they're spoken in English. I don't blame yeah. him. He doesn't speak Spanish. Yeah. But what if somebody had that library in yeah. Colombia, right? Yeah. Or somebody can pick it up. Yeah. Uh, ideas of Judaism, yeah. Rashi, the Rambam, yeah. the life of uh, the Middle Ages, the history or, or thoughts that he always had. It was fantastic, no? Mm -hmm. Fascinating library. So imagine if that was available in all these communities uh, or groups in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. That'd be amazing. So maybe if he did an example of one of these things taped and then uh, the Destiny Foundation, you know, by wine, would look at that and say, hey, here's our opportunity to just open up a whole new world. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should hire Eliyahu to do the translation of the library. That would be a big job. For a couple of years. Be cool, right? Okay, so, uh, are we okay still for some more? Uh, so I thought that was a very interesting Ramban. I mean, in, in terms of Musar has scale for us. Yes, sir.
Um, if you want miracles, you can talk about the miracles of the stones, but I don't know if I want miracles right now. I don't know. Eliyahu yeah. might. Eliyahu might. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, he, he has a possible, and Perak Chavzayim, he talks about, you know, the Torah t- tells them that when they go into Eretz Israel, they have to write the entire, entire Torah on these stones, these stones. of Gilgal. Yeah. What's that all about? So Chavzayim, you want to do it? We can try it. Oh, I guess, uh, it's true. In Colombia, they like miracles. It was so, commanded to Chavzayim. Yahushua. Yeah, that, yeah Yahushua will do it, of course. Yeah, yeah, because Moshe's not going to go. So if you want to look at the beginning of the chapter 27, the very beginning of the chapter. Mm-hmm. You, you keep this, these, this great mitzvah which I'm telling you today. Mm-hmm. Right? Like when you go over the Jordan into the land which Hashem is giving you, mm-hmm. You make big stones, you put up big stones, and uh, whitewash them with uh, whitewash, white uh, kind of whatever, right? Some kind of lime. And write all the words of this Torah when you cross over. Mm-hmm. In order that you will come into the land that God is giving you, Eretz Halavut Vash, a land of milk and honey. Following me, Kasher Diver Hashem Elokech Halavut Elokech Halach, like a God I've spoken to your forefathers and you. Mm-hmm. Now, there's something strange about the structure of the Pasuk. No? Mm-hmm. You should go, when you go over the yard, Dave, you should put up these stones and write the Torah in order that you go over into the land that God is giving you. It can't be Laman, cannot be in order that. Because this has already taken place after they have come to the land. What, what, what are you doing? So, uh, oh, I don't know. We haven't even talked about that yet. No, no. The next Pasuk. When you Bond. take these stones... Excuse me? Vahaya ba'avrechemet ayadein when you cross over the Jordan, you should raise, put up these stones, which I command you today, on the mountain of Eval. Now, by the way, Eval is the mountain. Eval is the mountain on which they had the curses. Yes. And you should... Oh. Hello, Judy Kims. Hello, Judy Kims. Hello, Judy Kims. What's going on? And I missed a call. Hmm. I have to tell her that I'm learning, right? I mean, do so she will not be upset. But where is it, Judy? So it's very strange that it, the, it, yeah, I mean, the whole Torah on stones. It has to be set up. We'll see. The, we'll see. And, and um, so he says, I want you to take, the, that I command you today, no, these stones, saying, no. that I command you today. Hi, Judy comes. You called me, but I, I picked it up a little too late. You hung up. I'm uh, sorry. I'm learning, I'm learning with Pinky and uh, Eliyahu. No, no, no. I, I, I could not. We decided not to, and and it's fantastic. So we're doing fine. But what is the problem? Where, you came home. No, I'm still here. Wow. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. What time did you leave? Nine, nine thirty. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Nine. Nine. Something like that. Upon the, 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 upon the so, yeah, and uh, uh, and Harival, and Sadatao Basid. again, he tells them. So, there's something very strange about this repetition, right? Because first he says, this is what you're going to do. And then he says, I want you to keep this idea in order that you should be able to get into the uh, land that Hashem is telling you. And then he says, when you go over the Jordan, again, he says, 
to put up these stones on Harival and make them into whitewash. I mean, he already said that in Pasuk number two, and now we're in number four. Uvanita sham mizbeach. Now he's uh, telling us something new. And you build, erect there a mizbeach to God, mm-hmm. an altar. Mizbeach avanim, stone. Lo tanif alem barzel. Don't cut. You don't use uh, iron. Uh, iron to shape them, but you take natural stones or shape them or whatever. You cannot, you you cannot, cannot use metal stones. to shape the stones. Right. Cannot use metal. And the Gemara says that the korbanot and coming so close to God is supposed to bring life, not to destroy life. And therefore, an, an iron that life. destroys life, yeah. like a sword, not is not appropriate to build an altar that is supposed to uphold life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, mm-hmm. You should make these stones whole stones. And raise up their sacrifices to God, offerings to God. And there you have to bring shlamim, which are eaten by people, by you, and you eat and you rejoice before God. And the katavta, and once again, he tells you mm-hmm. in pasuk gimel he already said this. Now he says again, the katavta la'avanim it called ibeat turazot by eretev. Now he's adding something by eretev, which means something, explaining it very well, well explained. So, so there the chachamim talk about many things. Whether it means that he should make it in many languages so everybody can ex- understand it or whether he has to write down not only the Torah, but also its explanation. D- 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 we'll see, we'll see. Is it, okay? is it, is it anything you make them, make them with Be'ach out of these stones? No. Hmm. Okay. He, you're right that it's enigmatic, because he talks about stones for the altar, and now he's going back and talking about the Divya Torah Azot. It can't be the stones of the altar, because he wrote before in Pasuk Beit, in Pasuk 2 and 3, he said, when you go, you should take these great, make great stones, put, a, put it with them, uh, seed, this whitewash, and write on it, mm-hmm. on them, all the Torah. Mm-hmm. Right? That's Pasuk Beit and Gimel. Yes. Here, he said it again, but he interrupted us with these Abanim of the altar. I do not believe they're the same Abanim. He just wants to tell you how you shouldn't fashion the altar with iron. And then he's going back to those other stones, I think. Listen, we'll see. All this Torah. Well explained. And Moshe and the Kohanim said to the Jewish people, they're about to go into Eretz Israel, right? Listen up, all of you people. Today you have become a nation to God. And you shall listen and obey that which God tells you and do all there is misvot and chukah asher anachim sochayom. So... So let's not skip too much anymore on, on the text, but <laughs> uh, Gimel, you want to go to Gimel, right? Mm-hmm. The Ramban. The Ramban says, and you shall write on them all of the these words of the Torah. Amar the Eben Ezra, B'Shem Gaon, which is the Sajah Gaon. Shekatvu Alehem, Minyana Mitzvot, so the Ebn is, what does it mean to write all the things of the Torah on these stones? Does it mean to write Bereshit, Barai, Lokim, Et HaShemayim, Et Aretz, all the words of the Torah? According to the Ebn Ezra, no, Divrei Torah are the mitzvot. And there are different lists of the commandments that the Rambam has, and the Baal Halachot Gedolot has, and others have devised. Lists which mitzvot do we know that we have 613 mitzvot, which is a tradition that we have that it's 613. How do you know it's 613? Well, they have a tradition that that's the way it is, right? And now you have to figure out when you look at the Torah, there are many more than 613. You should do this, you should do that. Right. More the question is, which do you count as a mitzvah? Ooh. All right, so the Rambam, the Rambam has certain rules about which ones you count as a mitzvah. There are more than uh, three many, before. many more, probably. Probably a few thousand. What? Yeah, sure. Sure. That's, what, that's how the Rambam starts with his Sefer HaMitzvot. He says we have to know how to calculate which mitzvah to be counted. 
some mitzvot have different versions of the same mitzvah mentioned five or ten times. So is every one of them is a mitzvah? Or is it one mitzvah that's just mentioned in its details Repeating. many times? Avod Azara, for example, you know. What does it masecha? What does it call pesel? What does it call, you know, Yilot Yishtachave Lahem, Lot Avdein? Are they all different mitzvot or is there one mitzvah? They're very, it's very complicated when you look at the Torah. How about if the Torah says, you should be a very good person and always do that which God wants you to do? Is that a mitzvah? Or is it a general, uh, you know, idea, uh, imperative that you should be uh, doing what God wants you to do? Meaning to do the mitzvot, specifically the mitzvot, not just big thing. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sefer mitzvot, Dagdamav Sefer mitzvot, he has all these 26 or 30 rules about which mitzvot, how to count mitzvot. So he has a certain measure of 613. The Baal Halachat Gedolot, which preceded him, had a different measure, and they argue. And he argues against the Bahag, and he says, oh, you shouldn't count that one, because if you count that one, then you have 14 others, and so on and so on. Yeah, anyway. But according to the Ibn Ezra, whoever, whatever the right count of 613, that's what they were supposed to write on the stones. 613 mitzvot. The text of the whole Torah. Not the text of the whole Torah, but the requirement, the mitzvot. So supposedly, the most the the supposedly the 613. 613. That's all they wrote on the stones, according to the Ebenezer. By Ere Tev. What does it mean? Explain it well. We, we wrote yes. it, right? What does it it's mean? It's very well? clear. You have to, write. to write it very clearly. That everybody should be able to read it. Not hieroglyphics, but clear. Now, why does he think that? Or Solomar, by Ere Tev. Shabbala Mikhtab, Loki Rashi should be Er Baher Shivim Lashon. Vashver Chabakuk, Katav Chazon, Ubeer Al Aluchot, Shorot Beer, Hila Etzama Ktiva Bagiluf. Okay, so there are different opinions apparently about what does Baer Hitev, Baer Hitev means clearly written. Like, uh, for example, uh, like, bad, my teachers, bad, like my teachers no, always no. told me, like my teachers always told me, don't scribble, write clear. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, right? Don't confuse bad with, uh, so with my uh, teacher saw that I cough, couldn't do it. Whatever. My teacher saw that I couldn't do it, so they said, well, I guess you'll have to be a doctor. <laughs> because doctors have lousy handwriting, yeah. so that's, that's <laughs> the only thing you'll be able to do. Crazy people, they understand. It. Yeah, they're crazy, right? So, um, so, he, so that is one way of writing it. The other way of writing it is, Rabbeinu Amru, Rashi says, and others, quotes others, Rashi quotes others, that really, Ba'er Hetev, writing it clearly means to explain it well, not just write that somebody could read it, but explain it well means that you should write it in all the languages of the world. According to Rashi and the, and the, 17. the measure of Chachamim, those 13 stones were very big. And they were able to write the Torah. They were required to write the Torah, at least in all the languages that were spoken. 70 at that time. It's supposed well, they say 70. I mean, I don't know why they say 70, but okay, yeah. it's an expression, 70. Maybe yeah. it's not really the number. But anyway, whatever it is, every all the languages. There were a few Chinamen in Eretz Israel, they should have to write it in Chinese. They should be able to read it and understand what you are saying. Mm -hmm. So the question is now, if you if you if you consider that to be important, then what about our kriyat haTorah in the shul? People come to shul, they don't understand Hebrew, and the sefer Torah is being read in order that people should hear the Torah, what the Torah says. And you write Breishi Parai Logim and Tashemayim and the guy says, "I wonder what he's saying. What does that mean?" Right. So you give them a book, maybe with some translation, but is the Torah supposed to be understood and read so everybody can understand it? So the Gemara does have, in fact, a time when there was a person called the Meturgaman, the translator. Mm -hmm. Sefer Torah was read in the shul, and people understood Aramaic. They didn't understand Hebrew at a certain time mm -hmm. in history. And the Torah would be read in the original language, because that's the Lashon Kodesh that Hashem had written the Torah. But he would stop at the end of the sentence, and like Eliyahu talking Spanish, the Meturgaman would raise his voice and speak the Aramaic translation to the people. That's by Ereite, people have to understand what you're reading. Okay? So that was 70 languages according to some. Umatsinu Tagi. I don't know what that is. 62. 
to Otsar Medrashim is Netsis. Tagim. Okay. Oh yeah, some people say Tagi means Tagim, the 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 book of the letters, of the crowns of the letters. Shaita kolatarak to Vabahem, mi breshit adle in ekol Israel, betageha bezi yuneha. Right? Umisham ni tatku ne etku hatagim bacholatora. So you know what? He says, what happened here was that this was the original full writing of the Torah with all of the crowns on those stones. All the crowns permanently written on these stones and from that place, that was the authoritative text that everybody who wanted to write a sacred Torah was using that text. How else, how do you know what the Torah is really? Right? So you would have thought maybe the Torah was the sacred Torah that was in the Aron that Moshe put the Zephyr Torah at the end of his life. And that's what the Aron brought into Eretz Israel. So I guess, what do you think, Pinky? That wasn't sufficient? They wanted to write, according to this Chazal, they wanted to write, they were required to write the Torah with all of its crowns in perfection here, and that is what was used to copy to all the Torah, whenever somebody wanted to write it. What do you think about that? And if that's the case, the, the Ramban says, Either, if you had to write the Torah, with all of its perfect letters, and even maybe 70 languages, so everybody could understand it, they would have to be pretty big stones. Right? Right. Pretty big stones. That's one way of explaining it. He says it's possible. They were huge stones. So one day, somebody's going to do an archaeological dig in Harival, and dig up the mountain, and they'll find that the entire mountain is these 13 stones. Humongous! With the writing of the same Torah, so in so many languages. What do you think about that archaeological dig? I, I think I think it's a little odd at the end uh, when there's the mountain of curses, and that's when they put it. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. That's for sure. Right. Well, as as a warning that this is the Torah that you have to keep, or else. Right. I mean, rather than this is the Torah that you have to keep, and you will be blessed. I mean, right. what's more powerful? To warn me, to warn you that you're going to be cursed if you don't do something, or to say to you that you will be blessed if you do something. What's better? What's more powerful? To low. Don't to, do that. To warn. Yeah. The Ramban certainly feels that, by the way, right? The Ramban certainly feels that. He says, for example, if you remember uh, about the mitzvah of letting your servant and your slave rest on Shabbat. Right? A seret that he brought in Ba'et Hanan. We read this once. Remember it, Hanan? It says, V'laman yanuach, you should rest, and your children, and your servant, and your animal, and your da-da-da. L'man yanuach, avdecha kamocha. So that your servant and your animal should rest like you. Period. V'zacharta. And you should remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. And Hashem brought you out, and that is why I'm commanding you this commandment. So the Ebenezer Ezra says, clearly, the Torah here is requiring that you remember that you were a slave in Egypt so that you will feel what it's like to be a slave, and you will be sympathetic, and you will want, just like you wanted to rest, you will be ready to let your servant rest. Because otherwise you might say, why should my servant rest? He doesn't have to keep the Shabbos. Let him work. Make a little bit more money for me and uh, bring in some more cabbages from the field. I mean, why, why should he rest... I have to rest, not him. So the Torah says, according to the Ibn Ezra, remember what it was like when you were a slave. And therefore, I'm commanding you the Shabbat that you should also let him rest. The Ramban says, no, that's not the meaning of the Pasuk, because the Torah is not trying to make you sensitive. The Torah is trying to say the following. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Yeah. He says, I want you to remember, just in case you want to make your slave work on Shabbat, I want you to remember what it was like when you were a slave. What happened when you were a slave? You cried out to me that you were suffering. And I, what did I do? 
I smashed the Egyptians. Therefore, I want you to remember that, that I took you out of Mitzrayim, and how I took you out of Mitzrayim, that I smashed your oppressors. Don't be an oppressor, because you'll get Except it. You're going to get, get, get it in the head. The same the Ramban says that a few times over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Ramban says that a few times over. It seems like the Ramban feels it's a much more powerful uh, methodology yeah. Yeah. Say it's uh, to better. say, you better not do this. Exactly. Rather than, if you do this, I will be very nice to you and love you and um, you will be a wonderful person and you'll get blessings. Mm -hmm. It seems. Unfortunately, unfortunately, negative reinforcement is better than positive reinforcement. Maybe that's why this Torah is put on the Hare Val. Listen, this is the Torah we're required to do or else, right? Because otherwise we, we either rise or fall by this and we, we will be... I mean, it's a good question you asked why it should be there. Why not on the higher bracha? It's hard to see. I wonder why, why it disappeared. Yeah, the stones. Yeah. Or he says maybe this was a miraculous thing that they were able to write on smaller stones like all the Torah in 70 languages. Uh, you know, micrography, you know. So he gives the two possible uh, interpretations. But we have no records of the people after Yahushua went to Mount Ebal eh, that find the stones. He did, he did, oh, no, 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 I, I don't know of anybody who found the stones, but the Torah does declare, does describe in Yahushua that they went, and they put up the stones, and they wrote them, and they declared the uh, Arivan Ari Grizim. I mean, that's, that's, that's recorded, yeah. like they were told to do. And they put, made the Korban Pesach, and they made an altar yes. there, and they brought up a Shlamim. It was, it was Pesach. Yeah, exactly. When they went across. Uh, that was the thing where they all the people made uh, the other people made the mila because they couldn't perform it before uh, forty years oh, before. before. Yeah. Okay, let's, 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 let's finish this. Yeah. So the man, we remember we were we were troubled by the word laman in order that right. We we saw there was something strange about the order. Uh, when you go, you have to write these stones and make sure you write the Torah on those stones so that, in order that, you will be able to come into the land that God has given you. Well, he's saying when you already come into the land that you have, God has given you, you should write those stones. So what do you mean in order that you should come into the land? In order, the man is a, is a, is a strange word, correct? So some you might say, you know what Laman means? Not that you will come physically walk over the Jordan, but come into the land means, you know, that you'll be able to accomplish the possession of the land and live in it and come, you know, so to speak, really come into it. So it could be Laman, right? In order that. You already have this first step that you come into the land, write it so that you'll be able to continue and come into the rest of the land because that's the, the, the commitment that you have to keep the Torah, right? So the Laman can work that way if it's not literally walking over into it. Right? So he says, Laman, Amar Rabbi Abraham, which is the same Eben Ezra, mm -hmm. Ki Hashem Ya'azrecha, Im Hachilota Lishmor Mitzvotav, Hashem will help you to come into the rest of the land of Israel if you will start doing his mitzvot. The first mitzvah you have is to write these things on the stones. Mm -hmm. The first thing you do when you come into the land is not walk around and take a swim in the, in the lake or to harvest the wheat or to eat some fruit. Right? But the first thing you do is you brought these, these stones together and you wrote the Torah to show that you want to do Hashem's will. First thing you do is that. Then Hashem will bless you that you will be able to come into the rest of the land. Right? The, the initiation. Initiation is a, as an important thing. This is the first commandment that they came into the land of Israel. Uh, to build the Mizbeach, to thank God and to write on the on the stones. Okay. That's one. Laman. Laman means really what it does mean, right? But figuratively, for the rest of the land, Hashem will help you come into the rest of the land because you do the mitzvah now. Lefidati, Ramban says, he rejects it. He always argues against the roof of Ezra. Almost mm -hmm. always. <laughs> Almost every time. Mm -hmm. So he says, according to my opinion, Laman Asher Tavo, what we mean by in order that you should come, Right? Laman, in order that. Remez Ramaz Lechol Divrei Torah. 
it really means to imply, to talk about all the things of the Torah, mitzvot the Torah, meaning, because it says, it's called Divrei Torah, Zot Lema'an, right? It says, I want you to write all these, all these mitzvot, Lema'an, in order that. So he says, Yomar, Shehakatuv al Avanim, Kol Divrei Torah, Zot, Ba'abrachah Bayadein, Lema'an, Miyad, Lema'an Asher Bata El Haaretz. In order is not the in order. We have to understand that the Lema'an, according to him, has many meanings. Usually we say Lema'an in order. In order. You say it in Priyat Shema. Keep the mitzvot, teach your children to da 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 Lema'an yirbui mechem, v'yimei b'nechem ala haaretz asher Hashem noten lachem. Right? Right? In order that, you should live a long time on the land. That's what you should do. In order. So that's the plain meaning of Lema'an. No question. This is but he says Lema'an sometimes also means something else. You do something because you know that the whole purpose that you have here is in order to do the Torah. But, um, it's reflexive. Laman, you, you should write all these words of the Torah and commit yourself to keep the Torah because you know that the whole reason that you were brought into the land of Israel is in order that you do this. Where do we see Laman like this? Uh, the word Ba'avur Zeh. Remember Ba'avur Zeh? The, 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 Ba'avur is also a, a, like Laman, right? Like Laman. What is Ba'avur? Ba'avur means in order that, so that, so that, right? And yet, we, we say in the Haggadah of Pesach, the Father says, I am keeping these mitzvot of Pesach, Matzah, Maror, Ba'avur Zeh, Asa Hashem Li, Litzaytim, Mitzrayim. What does that mean, Ba'avur Zeh? In order that, or because of this, that I am doing, Hashem took me out of Mitzrayim. Or does it mean, I am doing this because Hashem took me out of Mitzrayim. Two different meanings in the in the Haggadah, in that Pasuk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, do am I doing this because that's why Hashem took me out of his shrine so that I do this? Mm-hmm. Or I am doing this in order to commemorate because of what Hashem did for me. Mm-hmm. So the, the same kind of thing here. There, you're gonna write this these words on the Sefer Torah. Leman, Asher Tavo El Haaretz means you're writing the Sefer Torah because you know very well that you came into the Aretz, Lema'an, this. In order to keep the Torah. Keep the Torah. I'm not sure why you're... different, two opposite ways of looking at it, right? Eben Ezra says, I want you to do this mitzvah to show God that you're committing to his Torah so that he will, Lema'an, so that he will bring you into the rest of the land. The Ramban says... You, by writing the Torah, you will absorb into your head that the only reason you are here is because of the Torah. The whole, the whole purpose of being here is because of the Torah. The Laman Asher Tavo is that the reason for your coming is. Not that in order that you will come. Does it does make sense what I'm saying? Um, I'm, I'm getting tired. I don't see the difference really. The, the reason is the reason you're coming out of um, Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim is in order to keep the Torah. Order to keep the Torah. Or, or or you should keep the Torah in order that Hashem keep you out of you take you out of Mitzrayim. Do you remember? No, you should keep the Torah in order that Hashem bring you into the land of Israel. You will deserve Hashem's help to conquer the land if you keep His Torah. Uh, uh. Uh, That's what the Ebenezer says. Looks like uh, a start the first mitzvah to show God that you're committed, so that He will help you further going. Okay, so it's that's what the Ebenezer. It's utilitarian. You will gain a reward for what you're doing okay. to come into land, and so do this mitzvah in order that Hashem will help you. The Ebenezer, the Ramban says, no, no, no. When you do this mitzvah, you will be declaring that you understand very well that there is no point in your coming into the land of Israel just to have a land. Nobody ever said to you that you deserve a land. 
Hashem owns the whole world, right? What is, what is, yeah, but Hashem, Abraham was given this land in order she had saved banav asot tzedakah mishpat because he is the man who is going to teach his children to do justice and, and righteousness. So you know very well that you are coming into the land of Israel only in order to do God's will. So the Laman, he turns this pasuk around, right? Realize that you came into the land, Lema'an Torah. So by writing, the, the sentence is very complex according to the Ramban. It's sort of like almost the opposite, right? We, the way it's written is, writ, write the Sefer Torah, Lema'an Asher Tavo. But he's saying, write the Sefer Torah so that you will know that the whole reason Asher Tavo is Lema'an this. But why, why is then is the reason that Hashem showed the Torah to to Esav, showed the Torah to Ismael when we read in, in Deuteronomy at the end? Yeah, but if they would have accepted the Torah, it would have been a different history. Didn't. So it would have been a different history of the world. I want to talk to Rabbi Gottlieb about this. What what, what does that matter supply suggest? Was Hashem? hoping that they would not accept the Torah? Was Hashem fooling them? Uh, saying, uh, you want to keep the Torah? Knowing very well that they to wouldn't. Was, time he, was he being sneaky? Or was he being teasing them? Yeah. According to, if you look at it, really, Hashem said, I'm going to give the Torah to the Jewish people. Let me see. if Would they accept the Torah now? Would the rest of the world accept the Torah now? Then it would be wonderful. He would give it to Esau, to you give it to Ishmael too. Mm -hmm. And if he did that, then we would have a different history, right? We wouldn't be the Adim, you know, Orla Goyim. Everybody would have a chance to be Orla Goyim. Let's say it would be Esau's partnership with Ishmael, partnership with the Jews, to teach the rest of humanity. You know, right. The or, Torah. Or, the whole, or, or maybe everybody would accept the Torah, and then it would be the Mashiach would come. I mean, who says that there has to be well, a right? We have less problems that <laughs> we, may we have, have today. Less, certainly less problems. <laughs> The whole different kinds of history. Yeah. Although people could accept the Torah and then not keep it. Look, we've done it. Right? It wouldn't be the end of the world. The Jewish people got the Torah, and you so you just heard Yoshiahu had to discover the Sefer Torah for the first time in who knows generations. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh... right. so so he says Laman. Yeah. So he says, listen to this. Lefida ati Laman Asher Tavo Ramaz lechol divrei Torah. Yomar, to say, Shakatuv al ha'avanim kol divrei ha-Torah azot ba'abrachai adain miyad leman asher ba'ata because that you had come. Not in order that, but because of. Ki ba'avur ha-Torah ba'ata shama. It's because of the Torah that you came. In order to, right? Ki leman yanuach abdecha v'amadcha kamolcha he mentions in the Aseret that he wrote in Yadchanan v'zacharta ki evarayita you should free him to work for work in order that you remember what that you were a slave. Not that you should remember that you were a slave in order that you should give him, make him free. Right? <laughs> Create freedom so that you will remember how you were once a slave and not free. I mean, it's so that you will appreciate freedom. That's more like the Ebenezer, right? Keep these Torah, write it down, so that you will be able to be successful in the conquering of the land, because you will be always conscious of this Torah and keep its mitzvot. So Hashem will do that for you. But... You came out because of. Yeah, because because of. Because of mitzvot. Of mitzvot. In order that, in order to do mitzvot, you should do the mitzvot. Do the mitzvot. So that. That's why you were not justified. That's the only reason you. In the first place. Yeah. Right. Laman akimot chalaam. Right? Hashem took you out of Egypt only in order to make you his people. That's the reason that he brought you out in the first place. Right? Not that you should be his people in order that you should deserve to 
get rewards, but you should realize that that's your whole reason for existence in the first place. I mean, right? So different ways of Lamaya. Um, Lamaya is a difficult word in the Torah. For, in, in a few places, you will see it again and again, Lamaya. And Bavur. Bavur is also a kind of 